Welcome to everyone. Today is uh, UFC 256 predictions and uh, as I have already said, uh, I want to be fan friendly. Guys, so today our guest is Ryan Wilson. Ryan, thank you so much for accepting and uh, as I have already said, you're going to talk. I'm going to listen. Fans are going to hear your words. So <laughs> let us kick off uh, with the fights. Okay. Are you going to go with the first fight or you'd like to say something about yourself previously? We'll jump right into it with the first fight of the night. Starting with Chase Hooper versus Peter Barrett. All, All right. right. I'm just gonna say the I'm just gonna say the odds and you go from there. Chase Hooper minus three eight oh, Peter Barrett plus three plus three one five. Go for it. Yeah, that's ridiculous right there that Chase Hooper is a four to one favorite against anybody. But um he's got a favorable matchup here and slippery Pete. Um Super Pete has one fight inside the uh, UFC, and he got dominated by uh, Yusuf Salal, and he's able to get him to the mat multiple times. And um, I see the same thing for Chase Hooper, but his striking is definitely some concern, right? Don't you think? He's definitely I definitely green in that area. think uh, that Chase Hooper is everything but a good striker, but uh, his wrestling grows. He has to so... improve. I mean, he's only 21, so... Hopefully he improves on that. Yeah, so you're going to give advantage to Chase Cooper, right? Yeah, I, th I think so. But as if he doesn't get him down to the ground, I, I think uh, the advantage on the feet is to Peter Barrett. But um, if Salah was able to get him down, I don't see why Cooper can't. But these odds are just ridiculous. I mean, I they really know. think Cooper's going to win this fight. <laughs> I mean, it's a set I guess it's a setup fight, but I don't know. The dream. He's got the height, six one to five ten. He's he's got the reach, so should be able to have his way. Hopefully that loss was a good thing because he got beat up by Alex Caceres. Beat up. Caceres dropped him multiple times, and that was not a good look. I think he came into that fight as a favorite, right? Am I right on that? Well, I kind of back that up all day long. I also think uh, that uh, that uh, the odds are kind of insane because uh, if you ask me, Chase Cooper should be maybe two to one maximum, two to one, but four to one, no way. Yeah, no way on that. Yeah, he opened against Caceres as a minus two thirty five. So. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So yeah. Caceres is definitely a great play there. Um. I think I'll, I'll go with Hooper. I think he gets it done in the second round. I think he wears well Barrett. Hooper. Yeah. I'm just not impressed with anything Barrett does, really. I mean, his striking's okay. His take that defense is not the best. So I feel like Hooper's going to have his way here. Do you agree? We agree on that one. The next fight. Sergei Spivak, minus 255, I think, versus Jared Vandera, plus one. Nine five. Well, I got to say this is also an example of very unfair odds. Go for it. Yeah, I don't really agree on the odds here. I mean, I mean, we saw Vendera last month on the Contender Series face Harry Hunsucker, and honestly, I wasn't impressed. Like Hunsucker land some big shots. I had money on Vendera, and uh, I was getting nervous. I was getting nervous. Hunsucker was landing, but once it got to the ground. Um, Jared really showed uh, how much of a better fighter he is, and Harry got guessed out. But there's a big difference between Harry Hunsucker and uh, Sergey Spivak. I mean, I don't think Hunsucker has ever beaten someone with a winning record, and Sergey Spivak's beaten Tai Tuivasa. He's beaten, he has some notable wins in the UFC, Carlos Felipe. I mean, everyone knocks him for the Walt Harris, but it's Walt Harris. He has a lot of power. And um, I just think Spivak's got him everywhere, but the trend has been lately in low-level low heavyweight fights that um, dogs have been cashing. You saw last week with Collier cashed in over Volante, and you saw the week before with Parisian cashed in over Parker Porter. I mean, Porter cashed in over Parisian. So, I don't like the odds here. Minus 235. With Spivak, he should get it done. But I think there's some value here with uh, Bandera. Plus 200. Right? 
I have to tell you that I'm gonna pick Vandera here. He's coached by Dan Henderson and I had an interview with him and there is one big problem with Serhi Spivak. But only because of one big problem. Serhi Spivak is out of cardio, dude, if you know what I mean. In my state, when we say out of cardio, this means uh, the guy uh, who has no cardio at all. Yet, I'm not underestimating Spivak. He is a great fighter, but if the fight advances to later rounds, Vandera is gonna definitely defeat him. But anyway, Spiva can finish the fight early on. I'm not saying anything against it. Yeah, Vandera actually trained with uh, Dominic Reyes and leading up to that John Jones fight. So I like who the camp he's with. So I I could see um, Spivak trying to take him down and Jared just landing on top and just unloading and getting the job done. I could see it going that way because Spivak likes his Sambo. So... I think Spivak's path to victory would be on the feet, but if he gets to the mount, Matt can get a little hairy. So it's a tough fight. I don't agree with the odds once again. It gets out of hand, and I think there's value with Vendera, but my pick is Spivak. I think he's the better fighter. You're signing with Vendera, right? Yeah, I'm going to go with Vendera here, but okay. Different odds, different picks. The next fight, Tasha Torres, minus 4-5-0. Versus Sam Hughes, plus 350. Go for it. Yeah, this was just said yesterday, I believe, right? Yep, yep, yep. I watched uh, two fights on Sam Hughes. I mean, she has power, but very low volume. And uh, just relies on a couple of shots. She's kind of slow, too. She will have the height advantage. I mean, anyone who faces Talisha Torres has a height advantage. She's one of the small girls in the division, but... I kind of think there's levels to it. I mean, Tisha Torres gets a bad rap, but if you look at who she's faced, she's faced Jessica Andraj, Joanna John Jacek, Whaley Jang, Rena Rodriguez. I mean, these are the top of the division. And uh, you can't really fault her for these losses. And she looked good against Brianna Van Buren. So I, th I think this is a winnable fight for her. What's the odds on it? Uh, the the odds minus... Four five zero oh, Tesha Ooh. plus three five zero oh, okay. Sam. I figured that one. Yeah, but Talisha should have no problem here. I mean, there's just levels to it. I mean, she's faced the cream of the crop for this division, and um, Sam Hughes is making her UFC debut on short notice. Yeah, we, we agree on that one definitely. I'm also gonna go with Tesh on this fight. But uh, listen, you are right about Hughes. Yes, very low volume, and that's something that worries me because Tesh is too tough to to get rocked by a low volume fighter. Exactly. I feel like Tisha would just control play, pace and have her way in this fight. She won't struggle. Check on that one. But Next I wouldn't fight. lay the, the minus five hundred on whatever <laughs> she's gonna be. That's ridiculous. Next fight, Billy Carantido. Minus one five five versus Gavin Tucker plus one three five. Go for it. I actually have a play here on Billy Q. I like him this fight a lot. Um has really been impressed with everything he's done this year. I mean he started the year against Spike Carlisle. He started off slow, but uh Spike started to gas and he really showed that he's a volume uh striker and he's way better than Spike. I mean that was a great win. And then he faced Kyle Nelson, and he had a walk-off knockout, which was great to see. So I like what I've been seeing from Billy Q this year. With Gavin Tucker, hmm. he had a good win against, uh, I think it was Sam Cecilia in his debut. Right? So, yeah, Sam Cecilia. And then he came back against Rick Glenn and got beat up. I mean, Rick Glenn had four takedowns, and I think that was the only four takedowns he ever had in the UFC. Dropped a couple of times and just really didn't look good against Rick Glenn or a guy who I thought was fading. But, yeah, that was a really bad look for Gavin Tucker. Then he comes back against uh, Choi, who we uh, faced some adversity at first, for sure. And uh, But came around and choked him out in the third round. And then Justin Janes, he got dropped early. And um, it was just a case of Janes gassing out. And Tucker um, put him away also with, due, uh, due to rear naked choke. So, I mean, Billy has the advantages everywhere in this fight. He has the height. He has the volume. You might side with the kicks and the power with Tucker. But Billy, 
I just think Billy's going to showcase high volume, high pace, and I could call it by some a big bomb with Gavin Tucker. What do you think? You know, the only thing uh, I can say about this fight, uh, initially I was uh, rooting for Tucker, but now I've changed my mind. I'm going to say this is a toss-up, so I'm going to say the fight goes the distance. What do you think about this? Yeah, I think it goes the distance for sure. I think both guys are very durable. Did Gavin go the distance with um, Rick Glenn and that beat down? I think so, right? I think so, too. I think a judge had the score of 30-24, so... I mean, that's a pretty bad look for Gavin. I mean, but the but, guy can um, take the damage. Exactly. So I think he'll survive here. But I think we're going to see a really good performance from Billy Q once again, and he's going to sh show that he's really um going to be something in this division. Yeah. I like him in this matchup. He has the height, he has the reach, he has the output. It just maybe Gavin lands something big that could really change the uh, outcome of this fight, but I don't see it. I'm definitely siding with Billy Q, and I'm going to place a bet in. Right. Next fight. Mackenzie there. Minus 185 versus Virna Jandiroba plus 160. I'm <clears> going <throat> to tell you that I'm going with Jandiroba here. You go. Me too. Yep. Me too also. I was originally on Dern, but she is so one-dimensional. I mean, she doesn't get the takedown, and she honestly doesn't get the takedown that often. She only has a 7% takedown accuracy. So if she really doesn't get that takedown, she's in trouble because look at her striking. It's kind of poor. What does she have? Just like an overhand, a jab? I'll I mean, tell she... you as a kickboxer, sorry to interrupt you, please, sorry to interrupt you, but I'm going to tell you as a kickboxer and the taekwondo black belt, she only has that uh, weaving overhand right, and she has something that looks like, but just looks like a straight hand, a straight punch. Just looks like a straight punch. Uh, you can continue now. Yeah, I mean, she changed him. She's with Jason Perillo. But um, I just think Van der Rohe is the more well-rounded fighter. I mean, I think Hannah Cyphers pieced her up on the feet. I mean, her face was busted up, Mackenzie, in that fight. So I feel like she's going to struggle on the feet. And she's not, Van der Rohe is not going to get submitted that easy. She's a black belt. She's more well-rounded. And I feel like she's just going to control the fight, whether it's on the feet or on the ground. There's one loss to Carlos Esparza, which I think she took that fight on short notice. So I'm not going to fault her too much, but I just give all the advantages to Van der Oven. I think she's a great underdog play, sitting at plus 160. I have to add some uh, technical detail to this analysis. You've noticed that Mackenzie Darren mostly goes for chokes, right? Mm hmm. And uh, have you maybe noticed how Virna defends chokes well? Have you watched that technical aspect of the game? Repeat that again, sorry? Have you watched how Virna protects her neck from chokes? Yeah, I, I don't think she's going to get caught by one of Mackenzie's chokes. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to say because I'm doing this technical analysis for my boss all day long, you know. And that's why I think that uh, this is not going to come to fruition. Do you agree with that? Exactly. I think Van der Rohe wins via decision. I think uh, John DeRobo is going to win. All right, we agree on that one. Next fight is going to be Daniel Pineda versus Cub Swanson. All right. uh, killer Cub. Killer Cub. Oh, yeah. Go for it. He's back. I mean, he's coming off a major surgery, and Jake Shields ruined his knee in that grappling bout. And, um... He's 37. I mean, he's coming off a torn ACL and a meniscus tear. I mean, that's huge. See, I want to take a shot on Cub, but that completely changed my mind. Pay has been on some tear of late, some tear. I mean, he's won eight of his last 10 fights, and he's beaten some top-level competition, even outside the UFC. Um, he really beat down on Herbert Burns. He was a big dog in that fight. He was able to pull through, and a lot of people are on Gilbert Burns. I mean Herbert Burns, and he was able to show that um he was the better fighter. But um Herbert had a bad weight cut, so we got to keep that into concern. I'm not counting Cub out. Cub has fought the top of the division. 
He's lost to Ortega. He's lost to Edgar. Lost to Moicano. Lost to Burgos. Beat Crone Gracie. I mean, he just struck with Crone Gracie. I mean, <laughs> if you would have told me that that was going to be a striking bout, I would have maxed on Cub. But um, I just see a lot of advantages with Pineda. What do you think? Pineda knows to strike, and Pineda knows to strike very well. Looking back at the background of his strikes, I can tell you that the guy obviously has some kickboxing background, despite he says maybe in the interviews that he doesn't. Looking back at the, at the trajectory of his strikes, uh, take a look at his fight against Herbert Burns. Herbert Burns is a pure multi when he strikes, you probably noticed that. But Pineda, he has some mixed kickboxing, you know. I've never seen, he, it, it, it even kind of reminds me a bit of a Dutch kickboxing, you know, but uh, yeah. believe me, against yeah, exactly. Carlson, yeah, like Dutch kickboxing pick. could make a big problem because uh, with Dutch kickboxing you have very narrow strikes, you know, and it's gonna be very hard for Swanson to counter those strikes. That That is uh, the only parameter that worries me and that's why I, I would say Daniel Pineda. What do you think? Yeah. I um, think Cub is way past his prime. I mean, towards the end of his career, and Pineda's looking like he's in the prime of his career. It's, it's weird I'm saying that because he's 35, but um, everything's going up for Pineda and everything's going down for Swanson. I mean, we'll see. I mean, I'm not going to count out Killer Cub. He's a savage. He's fought the best in the game, but I would definitely have to side with Pineda in this fight. And I'm pretty confident in it, too. Yeah, I agree about Pineda. We definitely agree about that fight. The next fight. Junior Dos Santos, plus 335 versus Cyril again, minus 420. I'm going for Cyril. Go for it. <clears throat> uh, this one's crazy. I mean, when JDS fought Rosenstrike over the summer, they were like close to a pick em. And now Ghani comes in at a 4-1 to favor. And I mean, it's a big fade on JDS. I get it. But... um. I think the line's way off. But I, I think Cyril Gain is probably the best heavyweight prospect to date. Would you agree on that? I absolutely agree. He is coached by Fernando Lopez, the guy who is known for making prospects. And as well as you know, that's the guy who discovers Francis Nagano. That's the guy who has the nose to to discover uh, one of the greatest talents uh, on the planet. And believe me, I interviewed that guy, and believe me, that guy is... Uh, he is not normal intelligent, you know. I think that guy has a huge training IQ. I, I think that guy has a genius training IQ. Yeah? Who would you interview? Uh, I interviewed uh, his coach, Fernand Lopez, Cyril mm. Gaines coach. And that's what I'm talking about. That coach he has a genius IQ when it comes to fighting. And I think that's going to help Cyril Gaines because he says that Cyril Gaines only listens to him during the fight. So this might be a significant advantage. I'm just talking about outer aspect, but that's what... Uh, that's what uh, I know, that parameter. I don't say it's going to play the cr the critical role, if you know what I mean. But, uh, you know, it might be significant. Yeah, I mean, um, Cyril Gain, he's probably my favorite prospect in this division. I mean, he beat Bozer, and he basically just styled on Tanner Bozer. That's a great win. He um, showed that he has great submissions. I mean, with the Dante Mays. I thought that was a Hail Mary. I didn't think he was going to pull that off. And somehow he did. But um, with JDS, man, I hate to see this from him. It, but it only takes one punch, and JDS is done. So I feel like Kane's going to probably knock him out here. I don't know whether it's going to knock him out or not, but I definitely agree with you on that one. And J uh... Yeah, JDS, three knockouts in a row. His last win coming against Derek Lewis in 2019. I mean, that's the type of fight where Derek Lewis hurt, hurt his back throughout it and basically gave up. I feel like JDS is coming to the end of his career. Yeah, kind of definitely agree with that one. Should he be a plus 300? No, this line should be closer because he was only minus 110 against Rosenstrike. I don't get how that big of a jump happened, but... I think Cyril gains the play. Am I going to play him at 400? I don't think so. Definitely think inside the distance, but I think Cyril Gaines is going to get it done. Just okay. everything's working up for him. And okay. JDS. And this fight, absolutely. I mean, I'm going to say definitely that. Uh, I'm not going to disrespect the former champ, JDS, but he's very, very chinny of late. Very chinny.
The next fight is going to be between, oh man, the worst fight on the whole card. Kevin Holland versus Jacare Souza. Minus 1-1-10, minus 1-1-10. My advice, yeah, please dude. stay away from that fight. This line came down to a pick em. <laughs> I actually got uh, Souza at plus 135, so I feel good in that. But this line might flip. It might flip. Souza might become the favorite. Where this line's moving. I mean, Holland just had COVID two weeks ago, right? So, you got to keep that into consideration how he's going to be. I mean, but we look at the height and reach. It's all advantage with Holland. He's got an 82, and I think uh, I think it's a nine inch reach advantage. So that's huge. But I think Sosa's the smarter fighter. He knows if he's going to win, he has to take this to the mat because it's just different levels to this. And Sosa's literally like a Terminator. You saw in the Weidman fight, he just keeps on coming forward. So I feel like he's going to be relentless. He's going to get it to the ground. He might end up submitting Holland. I mean, Darren Stewart had his way against Holland. I don't Sorry see to interrupt well. you, but I think Darren Stewart won that fight. You think Darren Stewart won? Yes. I scored I think Holland was shocked he won. Yeah. Holland was shocked he won that fight. That, that, that fight... What was it split decision? Yes. Yeah, Darren Stewart's a problem. He's a really good fighter. So, what do you say about this one? You're gonna go with Jacare or? I'm yeah, I'm definitely with Jacare here. I think um, on the feet it's Holland's game, but I think he's gonna get it to the mat and um, definitely showcase his ground game and probably maybe I don't want to say submit him. He might submit him. Maybe. I don't know. Might go to the decision, but um, definitely side with Souza. What do you think? I don't know. I will just have to flip the coin for this one because this is striker versus grappler. And you know when striker yeah, meets point. grappler, what happens? The grappler usually wins. Yes. So I, I will probably say Souza, but uh, you know, this is very, very... I mean, his last loss was Jan Bolovic, the champion. Yeah, Jan Bohovic, yes. Yes. This is not a bad loss. He lost to Hermanson. He beat Weidman, knocked out Weidman. Split the gas on I thought he won that fight. Embarrassed Brunson in his hometown. That was a it was supposed to be Derek's coming out party and he gets blasted by Jacare. So I'm gonna side with Jacare. I mean, look at who's Jacare has fought. He's fought Romero. He's fought the top guys in the division. So I think he beats Kevin Holland here. I I, I agree with the line movement big time. Okay. Um, I think I think once this fight kicks off, so is going to be the favorite. It's very much that's going to happen. You know, it's very very much that's going to line. happen. Lines are it's moving, line. man. Flip. It's a, it's a pick them now. I'm happy when I got in at plus one thirty five. On Jacare. Right. On Jacare. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna go both go with the Jacare. Next fight, Rafael Fizio minus 155 versus Henato Moicano plus 135. I'm gonna go with Fizio here. You probably know why I elaborated. Go for it. Yeah, I agree. I'm I'm with Fizio. I like this performance against the Casey. I mean, he fights out of Tiger Muay Thai. Uh, probably one of the best Muay Thai gyms in the world. And he really bullied the Casey body shots, leg kicks. He really had his way. And a fight that a lot of people had the Casey thought the Casey was gonna win that fight. Um, but Fizia is just a different animal. I like Moicano at this weight class. I feel like he was getting a little drained at 145, but he's facing a beast. And um, one thing I did find out about Fizia: 100% takedown defense. So I think this is gonna be a striking fight and. I give the advantage to Fiziev all day. What do you about you? Yeah, absolutely. I got to say, I got to say that I definitely agree on uh, that one. I definitely agree. Definitely Fiziev. So yeah, we yeah, basically we're agree. Get to the ground, he's going to have the advantage. But that hundred percent takedown defense, I think this is going to be a striking battle, and um, Fiziev is going to piece him up. I got to say, I back that up all day long. The next fight, Tony Ferguson versus Charles Oliveira. 
plus oh, one four five birth. for Charles and minus one six five for Tony. So which way is um, it going to go? Part of this fight. It's probably the most fight I'm looking for on the card. Um, this one's a tough one. I mean, Charles Oliveira, that improvement, in that Kevin Lee fight was crazy. Um, showcased great striking, beastly beat up the bum Kevin Lee everywhere. Showed he was better on the mat, spinning kicks, everything. I really didn't expect that out of Charles. And he really is on, he's on a tear himself too. Seven wins in a row. I think his last loss was against Paul Felder years ago. I think 2016, maybe. Yeah, he's on a tear. And um, faces the boogeyman, the man who was supposed to fight Khabib for the title. And he faces Gaethje and got, I would say, bullied around, but we saw how he could take a punch. And he always comes forward. I mean, Tony's been at the top of his vision for years now. When he won 12 fights in a row, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the Gaethje fight, yeah. He, Tony, man, beats up everyone. But um, this one's this one's really tough. I'm, I think I'm going to side with Tony. What do you think on this one? I gave advantage to Tony, but, man, uh, they are pretty much similar fighting the elbows, style, so... The elbows, the pace, I feel like Tony's just going to have his way. I mean, Charles struggles when he faces adversity. I feel like Tony's really going to bring it to him. He's... He's just a crazy man. He's willing to die in there, Tony. So I definitely side with Tony here. Yeah, I'm going to go with Tony too. I definitely agree about that one. And now the main event of the evening. Brandon Moreno, plus 250 versus Davison Figueredo, minus 300. I'm definitely going with Davison here. You? Yeah, I'm high on Davison in this spot. I mean... <sighs> I don't want to say I wasn't impressed in Moreno's last fight, but um, I think he would have had a good fight on his hand if Orivel didn't pop his shoulder. Um, I think with Moreno, he's like a wild man. I feel like Davison's just going to be able to counter and basically find the, find the home of that right hand. He is something else in this division. He's like the Francis Nagano of the, of the, um, the flyweights. I mean, he just knocks... Everyone out, and um, what he did to Joey B twice, uh, just I've never seen anything like that. And made Perez look like he didn't belong in the ring with him. And I had figure eight on that spot, and I feel like it's gonna take a Herculean effort to take out Davison. What do you think? I think it's gonna be very, very hard for Moreno to to stop him because uh, Davison has very good throwing. To admit his ground game. Yes. That's the only way. I mean, that's what Formiga did. But um, Davison came into that fight with an injury. So. Not sure. I think Davison wins uh, before the final bell. Yeah. Do you think he finishes him? Probably. Or do you think he goes to distance? I think he finishes him. Probably third round. The Marino's a tough guy. uh, I doubt the fight goes the distance. Yeah, I, I don't remember the last time Moreno was actually finished in a fight, but he's tough. Yeah. But um, there's just levels to this, and Figueroa is going to display why he's one of the best in the world. And I, I want to see him up at 135. I feel like he's going to – he would thrive in that division. Right? Well, probably, you know, he could be the next double division champion, if you know what I mean. I think he could give a hard yeah, time he's to Yannick. Gonna run through it. I don't think there's anyone flyweight that can beat this man. No. Honestly. No, there is no one. I mean, there's a lot. The flyweight division is really good right now. We got Askar Askarov fighting Benavides. That's going to be a great fight. Maybe the winner of that gets the winner of this fight. I don't know, but I still favor Figueredo over both of them. I mean, what he did to Joe B was kind of comical. Um, Definitely agree on that one. Agree on that one, got to say. So, about uh, we agree about the majority of the picks the way I, the way I see. 
We, I'm only having doubts uh, about uh, Carantino and Spivak, but other than that, we basically agree on picks. Yeah, I would say one of my favorite spots on the card is Daniel Pineda over Cub Swanson. And I like Billy Q over Gavin Tucker. I think those are two comfortable spots out of value price. I mean, obviously, Cyril Gaines going to win, but you're laying four to one. I think Hooper wins, but I think that the line's insane. Um, I, I think Davison's going to win. He's only three to one. It's not terrible, but, um, Moreno's game. So I think he definitely going to show a better performance than Alex Perez did. And some dog shots. I like, uh, Jandaroba. I definitely like Jandaroba and I like Sosa, but it's, he's not a dog anymore. So those would be my two dog spots. What do you my think? My dog is Vandera. My dog is the one you mentioned plus Vandera. Yeah. Jared Vandera, yeah. I feel like that's just going to be a matter of who gets on top and who's going to pound away. I mean, if Spivak gets it to the ground, I feel like that's not the smartest of game plans. I feel like he's got to keep that standing and piece up Jared because I was really impressed with what Jared did on the feet in that Huntsucker fight. Harry was rushing him. And that's Harry Huntsucker. Spivak has to be smart and to finish Jaren Vandera early on. Unless, uh, I mean, that could be a big problem for Spivak because Jared Vandera is not going to guess out and Spivak is not known for fa for world-class stamina as well as you know. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. So, this would be it. Uh, something else to add or, or uh, I should start editing the video? Uh... That's it. That's all I got to say. We ran through the whole card pretty quickly. So said my spots and I like my picks this week. Yeah, we'll see how is it going to go. We're going to follow the event and we're going to see. I'll start editing video now. Uh, um, I don't know how much time will I need, but uh, the video will be in like, I don't know. Next morning will be on 100%. I just need to see how much time will I need to edit. All right, cool. Sounds good. All right, I will share your link. I've got the, the, the link in the description. So thank you for this, Pix, and catch us some other time. Yep, take care.